give you glory, 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 glory. Yes, Lord, do great things again. Do great things again. Understanding when you think it's about somebody else, we preach Jesus, we make him know, we lift his name high. He said, His glory will fade the whole earth, and that glory will fade the whole earth through the gospel. So we share the goodness of God in the land of the living, the word of God, the word of healing, the word of deliverance, the word of salvation. As you're listening, receive your own miracle, your own healing, your own salvation. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. You will just see Jesus there with you. He is interested in you. He loves you. He wants you to do better. Jesus wants to lift you up from where, from your fallen ground. He wants to support you. He wants to bless you. In fact, when you are blessed, Jesus is preached. Jesus is glorified. And so, feel free to say, blessed day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad they made it. As we pray to hear the word of God in another dimension, God will bless you. God will nourish you. God will heal you. God will lift you up through this world. As you pray for us, we are also praying for you because it's not by might and it's not by power, but my spirit says the Lord. Father, we lift your name on high this day. We worship you. The God of this house, the eternal one, we invite you, we say, Lord, come and take your glory in this place. The glory belongs to you alone. Minister your true word, your word of healing and deliverance and salvation to every one of us. Amen. Those that will hear from the line and those that are here, oh God, their lives will not be the same. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everyone say, Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to open up your heart as we share right now together the word of God, the word of life. Your life will not be the same. I want to share with you on what I call faith in God alone. Faith in God alone. Faith that is dependent on God. Faith that have, has its, its roots in God. Faith in God, not faith in anything 
Not faith anywhere, faith that is connected to anything else. But faith that focuses on God. That is the only kind of faith that will produce results. Faith that will bring positive things to manifest. Is that faith that faith that is dependent on God? Faith that has its source, its root in God. Amen. Glory to God. By God's grace alone, He loves us. He forgives us and saves us, not because of what who you are or what you have done, but for Christ's sake. That is why your faith should stand on God alone. You should focus your faith. Where is your faith? My faith is in God. I look unto Him. He is able. He is great. He is sufficient enough to carry me through. In the time of storm, in the time of trouble, faith in God alone. Don't have a contaminated faith. Don't have a dead faith. Don't operate a doubtful faith. Don't operate faith on what people think either about you or about things or philosophies of men. Your faith must be faith that is that is focusing or focuses on God. Do you want to get the result? Look unto God. <laughs> Don't look unto men. Men are fallible. Men are limited in wisdom, in knowledge, in understanding, in power. Men cannot help you. The philosophy of this world, even the best of them, will never help you. Only faith in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let your faith be strengthened this morning. Faith in God alone. Faith in God alone. Faith in God alone. Amen. Hallelujah. Our best effort can never be enough to end our salvation. That is why your faith must have its dependence on God. Faith that God supplies the strength, God supplies the energy, God supplies the power of your faith. That faith cannot get tired. That faith is a faith the devil is afraid of. That faith will take you to destiny. That faith will take you to the place where God wants you to go. That faith will subdue your enemies. That faith will make those who spoke evil about you to come back to tell you that God is good. When you have faith in God, not a man. I will begin to explain to you why people fail sometimes. We, there are people in our life who reign so high. We respect them, we, we regard them so much that when they speak things, when they say things about our life and destiny, then we conclude. We, we never think about God. Some people have listened to such things and failed. Some people have listened to human mentality, human ideology, human philosophy, human analysis, human way of thinking. God has a way, different way of thinking and seeing things and judging things and doing things. That is what God of God wants us to learn from Him. The way God thinks about things, the way God, God sees things. Amen. God sees lights where there's darkness. He can ignite light there. Mm -hmm. Where there's weakness, God can bring strength. But human beings, when we see where there's weakness, where there's darkness, where there's trouble, we conclude and say, hey, it's too much. How will this be? Hallelujah. Amen. Not by might, not by power. But my spirit says the Lord. So your best of all, God declares us righteous for the sake of Christ. God gave us everything. Amen. If God gave you Jesus Christ for salvation, for freedom, for forgiveness of sin, he has not finished. He will keep on doing all that good things for you until you come to the place where God will take the glory in your life. Amen. But you must be consistent. You must say, God, I'm here. Transform my life. God, I'm here. I'm your child. I know you alone. My faith is in you alone. If the other ground is slippery, 
slippery, slippery place. This world is a place that can fail you. The system of the world fails. The men of the world fail. The government of the world fails. Financially, economically, things fail. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He will not fail you. Amen. Let's read the scripture. Let's read something. That we're, we're, I'm, I'm talking about faith in God alone. If you ask me why, why faith in God alone? Because that is the only faith that was. Hallelujah. Once your faith is dependent on men and theology and men's conclusion, you are already defeated. You're already a failure because you're not trusting God and his word. That's where the power comes from. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 20. Ephesians 3, 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we think, we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages and world without end. I want to read it again. Now unto him that is able. Who is that? God. He alone is able. This doxology was said by Paul. That's what theology called doxology. It was said by Paul. And Paul said, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, uh, 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 abundantly, Above all that human beings, human beings, like I told you earlier, would think. Ask or think. That's where you should fix your faith. According to the power, there's a power in you. There's a power that works in you. The power of God that stations in your soul, in your life. When you gave your life to Jesus, when Jesus came to reside inside you, he came with power. Jesus came with power. The power of God lives in you. Power of God is working in you through faith and by faith. Power of God is transforming you. Power of God is keeping you. Power of God is healing you. Power of God is what it takes. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation. Amen. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. Yes, power. That is why your faith must be in God alone. Every morning you wake up, he's a father. I can see how things are going. I just put my trust, my faith, my whole life. I do not want to risk it by trying to put my life somewhere else because it looks very furnished. It looks very beautiful in the eyes of men. I am going to put my heart. I'm going to put my trust. I'm going to trust you every day of my life. I will not trust men that are fallible, men that are ready to do anything to change 24 hours in different colors. I'll put my trust in the Lord. Glory to God. Retrieve your faith from all those places you have gone to fix your faith. Mm -hmm. Put them in God. Return back to God. He is walking. When it looks like nothing is working, God is walking. That's right. The power of God is revealed in, a, in crisis time, in troubled time, in a time when there is trouble. That is when God shows up to manifest His glory. Fix your faith in God alone. God will not fail you. God will not disappoint you because you know, because He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask and think. Think the way human beings think. God is able to do above that because we are too conclusive in our thinking. We give up very quick. We say there's no way. Some will tell you they are experts on that. They have read it. They have studied it. There's no way. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. God cannot be limited. His power cannot be limited. His glory cannot be limited. 
is great, is a great goal, and he will continue to be great. Praise God. I want you to understand by faith, there's a power of God that is working, that is at work in your life on daily basis, hourly basis. Minute basis, the power of God. Can somebody say the power of God? The power of God is working, is working, is working, Amen. is working, is working. Amen. That is what transforms life. That is what Amen. keeps you marching. That is what will give you victory. Amen. That is what will make it overcome. That is what will make to make you to walk with your head lifted up uh, where, among your enemies. The word of God said. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You have to understand that it takes God to make it. It takes God to cross over the Red Sea. It takes God to survive the wilderness. It takes God alone to survive the wilderness. If you miss faith in God, then you're a failure. To begin to walk by human beings where they think, what they talk about you, you don't you are not strong, you are this, you are that, you are that, you are that. If you keep on listening, you end up depressed. Because sometimes people have nothing to offer. Maybe you are depressed today because of what they have told you. You think there's no more life again. They told you there's no future for you. Who told you? You have future in Christ. You have future. Because you're a child of God. God is interested in you. God is making you. God is transforming you. God is healing you. God is delivering you. God is doing a new thing in your life. God is manifesting his glory through you. Don't base your faith on human wisdom. Don't base your faith on the philosophies of this world. Even your best friends don't know who you are. Glory to God. Your best friends don't know who you are. Glory to God. Even those that claim they know you don't know you. It's only Christ that knows you. Praise God. It's only Jesus that knows you. They know your name. They know your call. They know your street. They know where you live. They know maybe your, your degree in education. They know those things. But they don't know you inside. They don't know what you are loaded with. It. They don't know that you are loaded with power. You are loaded with greatness. They don't see that side of your life. That is why you listen and you and you have problems, depressed because you think otherwise. Look unto God in your faith in Him. Your way not fail. Be careful. The testimony of God's power is not based on human eloquence or human wisdom. Be careful. The things of God, they are spiritual. They are not. They have nothing to do with human knowledge, human kind of wisdom. The things of God are different. They are wired differently. They are programmed differently. They are designed differently. They are spiritually designed Paul said, I did not mix it up with human knowledge. When I knew God had called me by his death, Paul said, I did not risk it by thinking, by mixing up with human knowledge, human understanding. Praise God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That will bring us to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to begin to read 1 to 5. I know what I'm talking about. I am persuaded. I am so passionate about this. That once your faith is on how the world moves, the weather, the, the wind and the seasons. When it goes winter, your faith goes wavering. When it goes summer, it goes wavering. When you listen to CNN, BBC, when you listen to what they're saying now, the virus that come again is killing. You know, it begins to shake in your faith. Faith that is not dependent on God is always shaky. It's always shaking. It's not consistent. And it's not productive. It cannot develop people. It cannot make people to stand strong. You see those people. Little thing carries them away. 
There are so many Christians. Wind blows them easily away. They can't even go through trial time. They can't go through time that is tough. Hanging on on Jesus. Asking God for mercy, 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 mercy to come through it. They must devise a way to shortcut way. Or they make a decision that will be detrimental to them. Because their faith is not fixed in God. When your faith is not in God, then you are not serving God. Praise God. Hallelujah. If your faith is not in God, you are not serving God. Because with that faith, it is impossible. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. With that faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and is the reward of those that diligently seek him. Amen. You must, by faith, diligently seek God. And then you get God on your side. Don't get tired in serving God. In this world, human beings do, those do get tired. Our bodies sometimes get weak. But listen, don't, don't, don't you to that. Amen. Trust God. Trust God's word. God will bring back the strength to you. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 2, I'm going to begin to read from verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, this is Paul speaking, came not with the excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring the testimony of God. When I came to you, I did not come with my human intelligence, my human philosophy, my human understanding, declaring the testimony of God, teaching, preaching the word of God, and revealing the secret of God's kingdom to you. I did not come. I did not come with human wisdom. So don't handle the things of God with human limited wisdom or knowledge or understanding. The things of God are operated by divine wisdom, divine wisdom, divine wisdom. Paul said, I did not risk it. I did not come to you just like human to give you human knowledge or human lecture. Like we go today, we will hear a lot of human lecture about God. Number one step, number one step, number two. Paul says, I am not ashamed. Paul said, I could not, I cannot doubt salvation. The efficacy of God's power to, to bring salvation. He said, I did not doubt it because it's the power of God unto salvation. Amen. The gospel reveals God's power. Amen. The gospel is God's power, it's God's power. The gospel is God's power to heal, God's power to deliver, God's power to save, Amen. God's power to do great things for people and the life of people. Amen. It's not based on human wisdom. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Forget it. And verse 2 says, For I determine not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I do not want to know anything. When you come to people among brethren, when you minister to people, sometimes we try to see if they are our class, if they have this and that, if uh, if their name is that or coming from here or don't come from there. No, it Paul said that. I did not mean not to know anything. It's only Jesus Christ I want to preach to you. And I did not mean not to know where you come from, who is your father, who is your mother, your color. No, it's not Jesus I want to preach. I want to preach Jesus, not any personality. I want to, I want to preach Jesus, not only any person. No, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to receive salvation, only through Jesus. Paul said, I have come, I did not mean not to know Mr. and Mrs. How great, how big you are, what you have achieved, what kind of car you drive, how much money you have in the bank, what is your degree, those things we are, we, those things we try to know that makes us to think we respect people. Paul say, I determine not to know anything. I have come to share Jesus' love. <laughs> I have come to share the grace of God. I have come to share the simple story, the simple gospel, so that everybody will get his portion or get their portion. Amen. Faith in God alone, not in man. Faith in God alone, not in friends. Those of us controlled by friends, 
When they say something, you change your mind. You think you cannot survive without that, without that friend. Oh, I don't want to offend my friend. But you want to offend God. You don't want to offend your friend, you want to offend God. Everything your friend says, you say, I will do. Because you know it's my friend. But when God says something, you say, oh, God, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to offend my friend. You are worshipping your friend or even your pastor. Even your pastor, nobody has the right to control your life as a believer. Amen. The Bible said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout freedom here. Freedom. Somebody shout well, freedom. freedom. We are freedom in Christ. Amen. Amen. You, are, you, are, you are called to please God. And when God is pleased in your life, good men will be pleased too. They hear me again. Yes. When God is pleased, you are a child of God that does the will of God. And God is pleased with you. Every good person around you will be happy. Amen. But when it's all about pleasing a friend, and whenever you want to do God's things, a friend says so. Especially those of us that are married to some men that don't know Jesus. Some women that don't know Jesus. As a child of God, your best friends are those who are not Christians. I'm not saying we should hate others. We love everybody. But we have to choose our friends that respect friends that respect our values. Friends that respect our values, who what we follow, who we are. So we can also learn from them. So we can also, you know, they can, we can, they can support us, we support them. When your faith is being uh, controlled. By human intelligence, tribal gospel, tribal way of doing things. You go beyond, you go outside the word of God, trying to do things of God outside what the word of God says, outside the scriptures, outside the spirit of the gospel. You are no more preaching the gospel. You are just trying to enterprise. You are just trying to do your business, not the gospel business. When it goes outside God's word, it's all about you. No more about Jesus. That is why we must preach it here. Somebody say, Pastor, preach it here. Pastor, this is why I pray it. Amen. Glory to God. Paul says, my faith does not depend itself in the wisdom of men. Now look at verse 3. Verse 3 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 3. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Paul said, I also supported. That's what Christianity is all about. To be with people. Not when people go through things, you run away from them. You dis disconnect immediately. You don't go where there's no problem. But you have also your own problems. You disconnect. Paul said, I was with you in weakness. Do we still have people who can understand when people go through trouble time and support them and be with them? Do we still have people like that who can support others, one another in time of weakness? Paul said, I was with you. I prayed for you. I supported you. I stand with you. I make sure I was there. When you are crying, I make sure I was there. When you are feeling so down, I make sure I was there. When, when, you, when you are afraid to support you. Praise God. And verse 4. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the power, in demonstration of the spirit and, power, and of power. Let me read again. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. That's what it does. It comes to entice you. It comes to convince you in a wrong way. But in demonstration of God's spirit and power. Suppose that I made sure that I preached to you based on the power of the gospel. And in verse 4, he says that your faith, which is what I'm talking about today, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. I told you earlier that so many people's faith are standing in man's human knowledge, sensual knowledge. They have people that cancel them wrongly, say wrong thing to them. They even have people who will tell them how to treat others. Mm -hmm. People who will tell them, their friends who will tell them, 
This one is my enemy. Why are you greeting her? Why are you greeting him? Why are you going there? I don't like them. You are my friend now. Why must you go there? You say you are my friend. You must do what I do. God, deliver us. Deliver your people from this world. In the name of Jesus. From evil men who wear coats. Evil men who wear suits. Evil men who take up the Bible but with wrong spirits. Who speak good grammar but there's no life in it. They destroy they don't build. They don't lift up people. They don't bring healing. They don't preach healing. They preach degradation. And that is why the church is in crisis. Church is full of weak people, confused people, ignorant people. Thank God for those of us. I'm not saying we don't have great people in the body of Christ. We have. Thank God for their lives. There are so many chaps in the body of Christ. If you want to know them, let the wind blow. Once the wind blows, you will know them. Because every faith must be tested from time to time. Every faith must be tested from time to time. If you put God number 10, when you want to serve God, when you don't want God, it's not important. You are not yet a disciple of Jesus Christ. I hope those people listen to me from the line and YouTube and those that will listen tomorrow or next tomorrow or more. If you don't put Jesus first in your life, first thing every morning, first thing every week, first thing every year, every month, if Jesus is not, but not, not number one, if God is not number one in your life, you are not a true disciple of Jesus Christ. You are just a religious person. A religious person that come these days we have to beg people to come and worship God. Do you really love that God? Somebody will beg you to come and worship. Do you really, do you really have a relationship with that God? If you have a relationship with God, you will attend to God. You will minister to Him. Amen. And He will minister to you. That relationship. Relationship goes with give and take, give and take. If you have a relationship with God, you must every day minister to him. Minister to him by worship. Minister to him. Glorify him. Honor him. Bless him. And the more you bless him, the more you receive. Because you have a relationship with God. But if you don't have a relationship with God, forget about it. You go, well, you open up your Bible maybe once in one year. You can do other things important for you. You pick God number two. Or number four. Praise God. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. How many times have I put at this? Do you understand that scripture very well? I am not ashamed of the gospel. I, I can't doubt the power of the gospel. I can't doubt the power, the reality of the gospel to deliver God's ordained mission. For the purpose of the gospel, Paul said, I do not doubt it. Because it's not by human power, human knowledge. It is by the power of God. Amen. That day you got saved. It was God's power that saved you. That very day you got saved. You gave me a lot. I don't know how many years ago. Uh, it was God's grace, God's power that comes to save you, that comes to deliver you, Amen. that comes to liberate you. Amen. Somebody preached to you anyway. Mm -hmm. But God is the one that works our salvation. Hallelujah. Our faith in God cannot be corrupted. Faith in God cannot be corrupted. When faith is in God and focuses on God, there's no way the devil will corrupt that faith. Amen. Because you know, uh, faith that is based on God means is faith that operates according to God's word. Faith that has its foundation upon God's word. Faith that the word of God is the food, is the source, is the strength, is the power. 
That kind of faith cannot be corrupted. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. How somebody is getting blessed today? Yes, sir. Somebody is getting blessed today. Somebody is getting blessed today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. First Peter 1, please. First Peter 1, I'm going to read from verse 3. The devil has tried so many times to fight against faith people, to bring them down, those who really trust in God. I was listening to a man of God this morning, and I was really blessed. And what the man of God was teaching, I was really blessed. Those that know their God will do great things. Christianity is not religion. It's not religion. Religion is full of formalities. Religion is full of, you know, activities. But Christianity is based on God's power. It's God, it's God's is power-based religion, if you like. is God that is in oppression in the life of a Christian. God is not oppression in you. God is walking inside you. God is keeping you. God is growing you. He's advancing you. So, that's the right faith. When you sing God, Expect something from him every time. That's why Paul said, when I am weak, I am strong. When I do not know what to do. The Bible said they looked unto him and were enlightened and their faces were not ashamed. They looked unto him, they were enlightened. And their faces were not ashamed. That's what happened when you truly look unto God. You will not be ashamed. When you truly look unto God, you will not be defeated. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to read now from the book of First Peter, chapter 3, chapter 1 from verse 3. Blessed be the God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us according to, has begotten us again unto a lively hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. God has begotten us with a lively hope. Hope that endures. Hope that sustains. Endless hope. Hope that will bring you to his presence one day. We're begotten with, by the power of resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Amen. Have you seen that? By the resurrection of Jesus, we are being begotten by the resurrection of Jesus. Our faith is based on that power that raised Jesus from the dead. The same power raises you up when you cry unto God, not only from grave, from falling, from weakness, from trouble. That resurrection power is still alive. That resurrection power is still well alive, still well alive. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the word continues to say in verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible. That's why I told you earlier, true faith in God cannot be corrupted. He said undefiled and that faith is not away reserved. In heaven for you. Now verse 5 says something I've been saying earlier. Verse 5 says this. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. Unto salvation. Ready to be revealed in the. Ready to be revealed in the. Last time. Glory to God. Salvation ready to be revealed in last time. Brethren. Very soon we're going to conclude this message. What I want to communicate to you today is this. Have your faith in God alone. The world is shaking. So many challenges. So many philosophies being introduced. 
so many furnished and wonderful statements and wonderful writings and wonderful suggestions be made. But the only faith that works is faith in God. The only faith that works is faith in God. Don't be tired in trusting God. Don't be tired in trusting God. All you can do is this. When you are weak, surrender to say, Lord, have mercy. Cry unto him. The Bible said, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon him, men, in the time of trouble. Call upon him, you'll be saved. Call upon him, you'll be delivered. You, he will not fail you, I promise you. He will not fail you. He will not fail you because he's the almighty God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The Bible said in Acts chapter 17, lastly, Acts chapter 17 and verse 27 to 28. That they should seek God, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him. Though he be not far from every one of us. God, that is what I want to submit in this scripture. God is not far from every one of us. God is so close to you. Trust God. God is more close to you than that your best friend. God is more close to you than your husband. God is more close to you than those people who think you respect. I'm not saying you stop respecting people or people stop respecting you. But when it comes to faith that works, faith that can put you to the position where God wants you to be, that faith has to be faith only in God Almighty. Faith that depends in God's power, in God's grace. That's the kind of faith that you need. And verse 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We came from God. We are man we emanated from God. God is our source. God is our source. God is our father. God is our creator. He knows how to sustain us. He knows how to be with us. He knows how he knows you in person. He knows you in person more than any other person. Put your trust. Put your trust only in God. You will not fail. Hallelujah. I promise you, you will not fail. And if you've gone far away from him, come back. Come back. Come back to him. Come back. You will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise for this world that has gone out. We are blessed by your living world. We give you all the glory, honor that is due unto you, adoration, mighty God. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, mighty God. Blessed be your name. Lord, we pray that those that are here today, those that have heard me from whatever channel they have tuned in, and those that will hear this word from tomorrow or in future, Father, the power of God will heal them. The power of God will heal them. The power of God will deliver them. The power of God will work in their lives. They will learn about faith that has its place in God and God alone. Faith that cannot be contaminated. Faith that transforms and builds and makes one strong. Anyone that is sick, when they hear, let them be healed. In Jesus' name, Amen. be healed, be delivered from every trouble you face. In the name of Jesus. Your life will not be the same, I decree. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone say, Amen, 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 Amen. Praise God. I want to bless God for your life, everyone.